Rotting of the aerial roots of orchids is very common and causes many health problems for orchids, sometimes resulting in plant death. It's a rather common situation that orchids find themselves in the hands of novice amateurs. Often, the aerial roots of orchids begin the putrefactive process while on the shelves of flower shops and garden centers due to the fact that they are in suffocating conditions in cellophane packaging with compacted roots that are tightly wrapped in waterlogged sphagnum moss. But business is business, and it is only important for sellers that the orchids last only a little while in the buyer's house and do not die immediately. And then everything else depends on us. When issues finally arise, such as drooping leaves or falling flowers, enthusiasts often turn to the internet or YouTube for solutions. As we too have a video on our channel about how to avoid these problems, the link is below. But there are other very intriguing tips for saving orchids that await us on the internet. For example, this interesting unconventional way of reviving an orchid by placing it upside down in a glass or plastic container with water. Simply, this is a method that promotes drowning orchid leaves with just the monopodal stem sticking out of the jar in the upside down position. There are hundreds of similar videos imitating the same approach, and I will now repeat all the instructions with detailed accuracy, step by step, without skipping anything. First, I clean the orchid from the old rotten roots, then I prepare the garlic water, I cut the garlic in small pieces, soaked it in the water, strained it, then as in many of these videos, I soak the stem of the diseased orchid in garlic water. Then for a long time, as in many of these videos, I rubbed the leaves with a cotton swab soaked in the garlic water, and then I dried it. And I secured the orchid, as shown in the video, with styrofoam and filled the bottom of the jar with water and sprayed it with garlic water and put it in a well-lit place. And as shown in the video, I covered the glass vase with a plastic transparent orchid pot with many holes. But just a few days later, I noticed that the leaves of the orchids turned yellow, which indicates a disruption in the process of normal photosynthesis, and as a result, the breakdown of the chlorophyll pigment began to be noticeable. We have a video on our channel explaining the biological mechanisms that can cause orchid leaves to turn yellow. The link is in the description. And two weeks later, I noticed that a couple of leaves had already completely rot and fallen off. All of this was to be expected. In such an unnatural condition, Gas exchange, which is so necessary for the normal course of photosynthesis, is disruptive. I know one thing. If I continue this, I will completely destroy the plant. Not only did the long-awaited roots not appear after the two weeks, but even the embryonic rudimentary tubercles, which long precede the appearance and growth of roots, did not appear. That's enough. I think everything is clear now. But how do creators do this? I thought to myself, and took out my trusty super glue, which works absolutely perfectly for this purpose, hardens quickly, incredibly resistant to water, practically invisible to a naive and gullible viewer. Oh, that's how they're producing all these fakes. Well, we were deceived again. How do you feel now? All these videos, without exception, are all deception, fraud, sleight of hand, often just substitutions or glue or Photoshop. Don't you see how similar they all are to one another? First of all, all you need is one magical remedy, and it's always something that people always have in their kitchen, then a lot of rubbing and soaking of this magical remedy then cunning methods of securing the orchids in a container, and then multiple video inserts showing a bunch of healthy, often store-bought, wholesale, or greenhouse orchids in large quantities to confirm this effect. Classic hoax, right? All of YouTube and the internet is filled with these types of videos, with millions of views. In many videos, this magic remedy is not even named with the simple goal of making curious people watch the video again and again, thinking that they missed some important information, thus adding views and further deceiving the YouTube algorithm so that it will believe that this video is actually interesting. This is an old and banal trick for scammers. I'm not going to touch this topic, but such videos simply filling the internet is almost completely clogging normal orchid channels in which people really try to educate the viewer on biological features of growing orchids at home. It was immediately clear to me that these videos were fake because the roots of these orchids can only grow from stem cells located in the healthy tissues of the monopodile stem. 
roots no longer grow from dry, blackened parts of the stem. The roots on an inverted orchid will not grow straight up, as in most of these deceiving videos. All parts of the plant grow according to a biological mechanism and always demonstrate such phenomena, such as phototropism, when photosynthetic roots grow strictly towards a light source, geotropism, when the roots grow towards the ground under the influence of gravity to secure themselves and reach all their necessities, hydrotropism, the growth towards the source of moisture, and so on. Orchid roots often point towards support in order to attach themselves to it and the substrate as a source of nutrition and moisture. Probably these creators did not know this and therefore they're just copying each other's ideas, gluing the roots as if they're growing upwards. You can watch a video on our channel about this called How Orchids Can Walk Out of Their Pots. The link is in the description. But in general, if such an orchid with glued roots is then turned over to its normal position, it looks quite beautiful, doesn't it? Roots will not grow on leaves turned upside down and immersed in water for the simple reason that gas exchange is necessary for photosynthesis to occur through the stomatal opening on the leaf surface. And orchids have an unusual type of photosynthesis called cam photosynthesis, like the type that cacti and succulents undergo. Now, imagine what would happen to a cactus that was flipped upside down and submerged in water. It will rot. Active capture of carbon dioxide occurs at night, when the leaf stomata are completely open. And how can an orchid leaf breathe if it's immersed in water upside down? Roots also do not grow on single leaves for the same simple reason, due to the absence of stem cells at the base of the leaf. It is also impossible for an epiphytic plant such as an orchid with aerial roots to make a plant adapted to absorb water through special root hairs like soil plants. So growing orchids in water is also impossible. We have a video on our channel with a detailed explanation of why this is biologically impossible. The link is below. All of these videos with similar content are simple deception, so try to avoid them because these creators who churn out such things take advantage of the ignorance of orchid lovers. It is important to understand that even without a substrate, orchids cannot grow and flourish for a long time. Therefore, growing and rehabilitating orchids in empty vases, bottles, and glasses with the small amount of water is also within the realm of myths and legends. Although orchids themselves cannot receive nutrients from the substrate directly, by attaching to the surface of a tree and growing on it, orchids do not parasitize or harm their host, but they use it as support, and most importantly, microbiotic diversity. Information is exchanged through the surface of the tree bark and the mosses. Bacteria, protozoa, and mycorrhizal fungi colonize the velamen of the orchid roots, getting there from the surface of whatever substrate on which they grow. And that is why, when growing orchids, we use various organic substrates. We use mosses, bark, and so on. If you understand how orchids receive their nutrients, you must understand that there is no magical remedy that can exist to restore an orchid, grow its roots, especially not instantly, as they promise you in these dubious videos. It is believed that there are no fertilizers for orchids at all. Any fertilizers that are used for orchids are aimed at the microflora inhabiting velamen. When adding fertilizer to the substrate, and please note that this is in the substrate and not water, we first of all need to feed the nitrogen-fixing bacteria, and then they will give the orchids everything they need. Nitrogen-fixing bacteria, mycorrhizal fungi, and protozoa that inhabit the velamen of aerial roots of orchids are the main mechanism for the acquiring of nutrients for orchids. Velamen is a unique layer of cells and aerial roots that plays the role of both the soil and the substrate for orchids. So if you want your orchid to be prosperous and healthy, collect rotten wood in a forest or park that is permeated with the mycelium of various fungi full of various soil microbiota and add this to your already existing orchid substrate. I assure you that you'll notice very quickly how an orchid that is withering will begin to feel a lot better. And one more thing. In these fake videos, there is never any chronology or dates. Because again, this is deception that is achieved by many means. Photoshop, 
editing, glue, substitution, replacement. For example, such images of orchids with a large number of peduncles of flower spikes can be easily made using Photoshop. If you've been growing orchids for a long enough time, you probably notice that orchids only produce one flower spike per pair or per three leaves. So that is, if there are seven peduncles in the picture, there should be at least seven pairs of leaves. That means there should be 14 full leaves on a monopodile stem. I don't see this in these pictures, and from this I can confidently conclude that this is a hoax. Peduncles are either simply cut from another orchid and stuck onto the substrate, or the above images are created using the help of Photoshop. If you have any doubts about my arguments or words, you can try it out yourself. But there's only one of two things going on here. Either I'm a complete idiot and my knowledge and experience is worthless, or YouTube and the internet in general is simply filled with fake videos by creative crooks. <laughs>